Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. So today, Bill, what we're talking about is a really cool article that came out. I don't know if I'm, I believe it, I don't know if I don't believe it, but it says house prices are about to plummet by 20% in these pandemic boom towns. I don't know what the boom towns are. I didn't read the article, but let's read it and let's say, you know, see if we agree or we don't disagree. Okay. All right. So do me a favor, in the meantime, consider subscribing. It really helps. And like the video too and share it. Bill, why don't you start us off? All right. <clears throat> House prices are about to plummet 20% in these pandemic boom towns. Wonder what the boom towns are. Hmm. I think I have an idea of a few. <laughs> so let's see if I'm right. House prices boomed across the country during the pandemic, but some of these hot spots will see a dramatic drop in valuations an expert has warned. In particular, the housing market in the South is in a bubble set to burst, according to the real estate analyst, Nick Girelli. So let me ask you a question. I think I know which one is gonna be two, and if they don't mention it in this one, I'm gonna talk about it at the end of the video, so make sure you, you wait till the end to get, I'll tell you what my prediction is. Mm -hmm. Let's see what he says. Go okay. for it. So Girelli, CEO of analytics firm ReVenture, predicts they could see prices drop as much as 20% over the next few years, within a 15% fall in the next year alone. Already, recent reports have shown parts of Florida and Texas are seeing prices fall slightly in contrast to areas of America where they are still edging up. So, I agree. So basically, Texas and Florida yep. was the boom areas. Obviously, right. yep. we know that. Okay, so what goes up the fastest comes down the fastest sometimes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we knew that Florida especially and Texas, it couldn't have been boom, 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 you know, it was going to crack, and it, and it did. Right. And we thought prices were going up all the time because of lack of inventory. And then we had a whole bunch of inventory hit the market, but it was still not affordable. Mm -hmm. So we were wrong about that. But do you think those the boom towns they're talking about is going to be in Florida and Texas? There's a lot of data out that's starting to come into the you know come in now where you know it's talking about inventory and people trying to separate the inventory with particular like condos like our last video we talked about condos um, and I guess there's some new laws and stuff that have been just recently kind of uh, surfacing so again more changes coming to the condos so we really need to pay attention to that mm -hmm. and then try to separate out condo because sometimes the data gets blended together with residential meaning mm -hmm. condo townhouse and single-family homes oh I think condos in Florida are in trouble right so trying to separate that data out mm -hmm. would be, you know, was we have to kind of see how this article goes. All right, but, but there will be more dramatic drops in former boom towns in the South, according to, how you pronounce this last name? Girelli? Girelli. Okay. And I know, his, I know his YouTube channel because he does the reventure thing, and I watch him, he's yep. pretty cool. It's simple matter of supply and demand. Okay, a flood of homes for sale over recent months has, that's thunder. So we might get hit by lightning for you guys. Just consider <laughs> so that. So we got one. rained on before. <laughs> we got soaked before. Soaked. Now we might get struck down. All right. A flood of homes for sale over recent months has come to the same time the surge in buyers that drove up prices has fallen away. Agree or disagree? A lot of buyers are gone. I would agree with that, yeah, that the buyers have, they're so, sitting on the sidelines. So inventory went up and buyers have dropped. Okay, Correct. interest rates dropped a little bit now, but there's this. I don't think it's enough to really spark the people off the sidelines yet. No, I, I, I agree with, you know, I agree with that, you know. Such a fall alone won't be enough to make houses affordable, especially with mortgage rates still close to 7%, but it helps, he said. Right, every little bit helps. Yeah. You know, because it, it's a couple hundred bucks a month when that comes down little by little. A couple hundred bucks a month here and there adds up to big savings over time. I just don't think, here's the deal, okay? I'll tell you the people that, and then we'll continue. The people that are gonna be screwed are the people that bought two years ago at the peak. The people that, if they bought it two years ago and they have to sell now. If they don't have to sell now, they're okay. Right, right. Okay, but people that bought three, two, three years ago, 
you know, and they say they have to sell, sell now because of job or divorce or they need a bigger house, mm -hmm. and they put the minimum amount down. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for them. It, it really is. That's going to be a tough sell um, because you're just not going to, it's not going to, you haven't appreciated enough to make it worthwhile yet. And a lot of people, you know, the reason why there's so many price cuts is because they didn't price the homes correctly in the first place. Right. We've talked pretty extensively about that. Go for it. All right. Uh, according to the article, it says, I'm not anticipating that home buyers will look at that and be like, I'm going to rush in and buy, Jarelli told Business Insider. If someone's expecting an overnight crash where everything gets cheaper to the level that it went, that's unrealistic, he explained, since the U.S. housing market remains at its most unaffordable in decades. So let's talk about this for a second, yep. okay? Because it's really, really important. A lot of people are saying, I'm waiting for the crash, we're waiting for the crash. The crash doesn't happen. They, they, <laughs> I swear, some people think that it's like okay, it's Friday and Monday that houses are going to crash and I'll be able to afford. It. It's such a gradual right. thing. We're, we're talking about over years. Right. So you won't even really notice as things start to trickle down unless you're really, really, really paying attention to it. Because it's so slow. It's you're going to pay attention to it every day for the next two years, and then watch as prices go down. Most likely not. But let's say, but but people don't realize the other thing. Some people are saying, "Hey, I'm going to wait till interest rates go down to the fives, five okay. and a half, which is possible." Right. Okay. But if rates go down to five and a half, what's going to happen to the price of the homes? They're going to go up. Right. Because <laughs> that's the way it works. <laughs> so. And your your favorite saying is, "Marry the house, no. take the rate." <laughs> Oh, I, I know you hate that one. No. No. Ugh. All right. So this his quote continues. Jarelli's quote continues on. But if some if someone has patience and does their due diligence, in two or three years, there will be a lot of good buying opportunities, according to Jarelli in this article. I agree with that. Yeah, I think so. I, 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 here's the thing. It's not like you're going to be able to just walk down the block. Just so we're being realistic, you know, as to what these, what's going to happen potentially, and what this article is saying, it's not like you're going to walk down the block in every city and state in America, and there's just going to be deal, 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 deal. You know, it's there's going to be places like, for instance, Miami right now is struggling, but Tampa's really not, as a whole. You know, the tri-county area. Yeah, but you I'm, know, Lakewood Ranch is booming, and then other areas aren't. But I think one of the towns that's going to say it's going to be a bust mm -hmm. i haven't read the thing but i guarantee you he's going to mention tampa yeah the tampa metro area i think he's going to say yeah, not tampa. city of tampa but I metro. Think he, i think he's going to put in it i could be wrong we're going to find out so wait till the end but i think he's going to say tampa is going to be one of the cities that things are going to drop 20 percent so basically new housing inventory in the south has reached the highest ever at two hundred ninety-nine thousand as of july he said, hmm. told Business Insider. New homes are still being added to the market with builders currently working on 8.9 months of fresh supply, he added. 8.9 months of wow. supply? On new construction. Is, is that, does that sound right? I mean, I knew that in our, just specifically in our area, I knew new construction, it's definitely more of a buyer's market in the new construction world. I didn't know we were at 8.9, you know, to be I, honest. I just, like I, just read a, I just read an article that says new construction is actually now cheaper than pre-existing homes. It depends on where you go. It really does. But um, we're gonna do a video on that, so yeah, make sure you check that out. I was gonna say, I think out. we should do a video because I'm starting to see a shift. Yeah. I really am starting to notice a shift. And I have a lot of new construction right by where I live. And I know that there's a lot of resale and a lot of new construction. And there's a little battle going on right now. Yeah. So it's I think that would be a good article. Cool. Um, when new construction soars, there's usually less competition for each home. When there are more sellers than buyers, prices tend to fall. And homes sell slowly and below asking price while inventory levels creep up. Which inventory levels do creep up because they sit on the market longer so we're getting stale inventory which makes sense um, like I said where, where I think the data and I've said this in other videos that looking at the data of potential buyers because we're so slow right now it just feels somewhat artificial to me you know we just don't have enough information in yet to be able to put a finger on things mm -hmm. that like our data just came out from you know everything's always lagged by 30 days so we just got the data report last night so i haven't had a chance to look over all the new numbers for the county and state but 
it's it feels just because inventory is sitting and I still feel like there is a lot of unrealistic sellers with their price expectations. Oh, ton, 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 ton. And then it's just ridiculous. I, I just pulled the data in a neighborhood here in Tarpon Springs and the houses, there were some houses that have been on the market for over 100 days, 120 days, 130 days, and just in the Tarpon Springs area. And these are nice houses. These aren't junk. These, you know, they're not like, you know, a, a, a renovation house, a fix me up or kind of thing. You know, these are, these are good homes and they're sitting on the market because they're overpriced. Yeah, when there are more sellers and buyers, prices tend to fall and homes sell slowly and below asking price while inventory levels creep up. Demand for new homes is way down, way down from pandemic and, and that's now intersecting with the biggest pipeline of homes for sale in the South that we've ever seen, Jarelli explained. It's true. Yeah. We were booming and now, you know, you don't like the word crashing, but I think that we are we are crash. The reason I don't like the word crash, just so we're clear on that, everybody crash and they instantly think back to 2007. Right. Like crashing. But see, they, it, it, when you say crash, you think it happens overnight, but it, you know, right. it started 2006, 2007, 2008. Right. That is, exactly. That took years to happen. So that's when I say crash, it makes, it does, I guess you're right. A crash makes it sound like it's overnight thing, which is, it's not. Right. You know, the additional ingredient on the top, which makes it more likely that prices fall. In key southern boomtown, prices have shot up between 50 and 70 percent since the pandemic. It's true. Yep. It's crazy. I know some houses, some areas, that the houses doubled in value. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Literally doubled. Like, they paid 200000 for them, and now they're 400000 Yeah. You, we've both seen it everywhere and i think it's stupid so they're like well if you have a 20 percent drop in value mm -hmm. if your house doubled but then you have a 20 percent drop in value you're still way ahead right people, right people it's not like you're negative no so you know and then the article goes on to talk about incomes have only risen 10 to 20 percent in the same time period it's true right so, so we're not keeping in uh, uh Income is not keeping up with inf the inflated prices of the homes or the, and, and just even generalized growth of the, equity value. One of the biggest problems we had, too, that's, uh, from the boom, you know, from the pandemic era and stuff, you know, people were trying to save 20% to put down. Right. But they couldn't save fast enough. Right. Because the prices were going up at a faster rate than they could save. Yeah. So that 20% never materialized because they thought they, they had to save, say, $20,000 or $30,000, keeping it simple. And now they need to save, to, for the same 20% for the same house, they have to save 50000 Right, right. It, it, it was, and their income isn't keeping up with it right now, so. All right, here's the, here's the towns that we're starting to talk about. They're going to mention the first town. Well, he is. Let's see if you agree. So... One such boob town is Austin, Texas, that has already seen home prices fall significantly from their peak following the pandemic. Home price sales have already declined 2.9% year-over-year data from Redfin revealed last month. I've, I've, I've seen a lot of videos on Austin. That yeah. place was, was booming, and, yep. and, and you know now it's, it's dropping. Right, it's cooling off. Yeah. Thousands of Americans fled to Austin in the pandemic, mm -hmm. looking for more space to take advantage of low taxes, remote work becoming a possibility. True. It's very true. They did. Go ahead. The thriving tech industry in the city also attracted many well-paid, skilled workers in the period. Home price sales in the city have already fallen 1.2% in the year in the year to June, according to the data. Fort Worth has also seen a decline of 1.2% in the same period. Now, 1.2 doesn't sound that bad. You right. know, you're saying 20%, but 1.2. So if you if it say it does another 1.2 next year, another 1.2, you're like at 3.9 or whatever. You know, you're not at that 20% mark. So what I guess what he's trying to say is it's going to it's going to increase rapidly the fall. We'll Do you see. agree with that or disagree that with that? That means we have to move property. You know what I mean? If you think about it, right? Yeah. 
Like that, is people have to. We'll have to see how the numbers actually to so let's shake say out. Prices in San Antonio and Fort Worth were also pushed up by the influx of residents in search of lower cost of living, better quality of life, and lack of income tax. Same thing that happened in Florida. Same thing here. Yeah. Okay. It's it's totally the same thing. The housing market in Florida, West Coast, is also cooling according to recent data. Yep. Go for it. The housing market in North Port is cooling fastest. Followed by Tampa and Cape Coral. I knew they were going to mention Tampa. The analytics and from I, Red. And Fed. I didn't read this article. I knew well, they were going to say Tampa. Tampa's been on the hot plate for a really long time, and a lot of articles have been discussing that Tampa's market is cooling. Um, this is where I kind of, at the beginning of the video where I started talking, I would really like to see the data if they're including condos, because we have so much coastal area here and condo in the Tampa Bay area. It's crazy. So I really would love to see the data so on So let's this. see. In Northport, which is located in Sarasota County, which is south of where we are right now, between Tampa and Fort Myers, the supply of homes is up 68% year over year, the second biggest increase of the metros analyzed by the real estate company. Hmm. They also have a lot of new construction going on down there. They do, they do. In Tampa, which also saw sur a surge of home buyers during the pandemic, 43.1% of sellers are now dropping their asking prices and the supply of the homes is up 62.9% from April last year. That's crazy. 62%? Yeah. That's an insane number if you really think about it. Right. Comparing April to April. Right. So this April, is where I say- April when, of 23 to April of 20, 24. Right, to month to month, not year over year. So you notice how they switched data a little bit here? Yeah, no, I noticed that, they, yeah. They switched from year over year to month compared to month. Yep. Because it looks better. It mm -hmm. makes the data, it makes the, 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 the article sound more scary. It's up 62%, 62.9% from April of last year. But remember back what we said, even just here in the, uh, the Tarpon Springs area, um, the houses are sitting that are if they're priced too high they're sitting for 100 120 days and it's happening it's i just did an evaluation for a client all right so meanwhile in cape coral inventory is up 64 percent the median price per square foot is down 2.9 percent and 37.5 percent of sellers are dropping their price up from 32.9 percent earlier this year so point Four percent. Yeah. Okay. Point four. I guess <laughs> in Cape Coral. It, Cape Coral. If you're not familiar, that's just a that's a totally different market. Cape Coral is the the, the homes there are significantly different. Florida is building more new homes than any other state aside from Texas. We are True. Every, we everywhere. We, everywhere we turn. Yeah, we know we, that. You know. Girelli also pointed out the state of wider U.S. economy could dent house prices in the near future. The economic cycle tends to follow housing cycles, he told Business Insider. It's true. Yeah. There's a cycle. The unemployment rate has gone up significantly. I don't know. I haven't been following that. Neither have I. Interest rates are the most restrictive level in two de decades. That's true. Yeah, for sure. Okay, I guess no 7%. Doubt about that. So people were used to it. Adding, I think at this point, there's going to be a recession. Who knows when it's going to happen, but obviously, you know, it's, it's going to happen, whatever. <laughs> a, lot, a, lot of, a lot of people already think that we're in a recession. It's such an open-ended statement. At some point, there's going to be a recession. Yes, yes. I mean, come on. <laughs> yes. It, it might be, you know, some people think, I personally think that we're in a recession now. I do. You know, a non-declared recession, but I still think people are hurting. And, yeah, and remember, if we don't say it, it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> but I agree. So do you think the prices, okay, do you agree with him that prices are going to drop 20%? I think that's excessive. I really do. Give me a number. No, I'm not going to give a number because this is all speculation and this is what they think might potentially happen because they're assuming everything's going to be the same for the next six months. I don't know. I can't give you a number on how much is going to change in three Here, years. All right, here's my prediction. I'm not even a realtor. My prediction is that I see prices going down maybe 5%, but I don't see prices going up. I think prices are going to be stagnant for a little while. 
I think yeah, I think we're going to be pretty even keel for at least the next year. Like like Zillow used to send me these forms saying, hey, you know, your value, uh, your yeah. area is going to go up 4.1 percent, then the following week 3 percent, then 2 percent, <laughs> and now it's 0.2 percent. Right. Tell us what you guys think. Do you guys think that prices are going to drop 20 percent? That's the question for today. Do me a favor, consider subscribing. That's today's video. Watch this video right here. Like the video and share it. It's really important and it's greatly appreciated. And we didn't get hit by lightning, so it's a good thing. <laughs> All right, we'll talk to you guys later. See you on the next video. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>